The Lord, once again, we have a blessed time in God to be able to be free to seek Him wherever you're at. Not everybody has that liberty. So don't ever take the liberty for granted that God has made available that we can go to the throne of grace any place, any time and be able to find refuge in him. When we keep our heart committed unto him, he somehow, somewhere provides the peace that's not based on the word. But the peace in knowing your relationship with him. Let us go to the Father. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, I'm so glad that you are my heavenly Father. That existed before all creation. You existed before all principalities, powers, rulers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. You existed before humanity, flesh and blood. You showed your superiority, your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding. That if we are to seek you, that is the spirit, then we don't fall for the ways of this world that will ultimately fail humanity. And so we hold true to your knowledge and your wisdom. Continue to do great things. Continue to show yourself strong and mighty on behalf of all who falls upon your holy and righteous name. As they yield to your will, as they obey your command, as they fear you and honor you with reverence, that your ways are always better. You said you can make peace even when humanity can't. You can bring peace into existence. But you also said you can allow evil to be created and to have its way. So because you're able to control all things, We yield to you in faith, acknowledging your holiness and your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sometimes we wear and we don't need to wear. If you say you belong to the God you say you say, then trust him as you obey him and let him work out the situations as he lead and guide you skillfully because of who he is yes this is a worship that many are worshiping and praying for what is going on while they may not be immediately affected by what is happening. They have a heart to sing out to God, and worship God, that he would intervene and have his way over righteousness. He would judge righteousness. He would intervene righteousness. Because he tells us to pray without ceasing. And so we pray for those throughout the whole United States, throughout international and everywhere, that God, who's omnipresent, would show himself to be the God in this manner, to move on behalf.
and resolve a situation that only he can see and resolve. We've even had some incidents here. Racism based on religious ideology. And when we get to the point where we hurt one another because of our differences, then we have to ask ourselves, which God are we really serving? Are we serving the God of self and personal agenda? Are we serving the God of creation? Because God is going to bring everything into judgment, whether it be seen or unseen. So he says, consider the matter. Fear God and obey my commandments. Because I will ultimately determine all actions, whether they're good or evil. This is the God that blesses his people. And the blessing is not about sight. Because a blind person can be blessed. So we can't limit how God blesses. God has a way to always outsmart humanity, wisdom. Let us continue to pray. And just ask God to work out the situation. While we may be at peace here, We could be in the same situation. Don't ever think your freedom cannot be taken away. Some things you can't allow to go on and happen. The Bible says there shall be laws. It shall exist. And when lawlessness exists, there's nothing you can do. And so God is reminding everyone to be careful, not taking an opportunity to ask God to work on behalf of us. I just ask God based on his knowledge and will that he will do what is necessary for he knows all things and he's able to uphold all things by the power of his word. I don't know enough about all the situations and I'm trying to learn more about the Middle East crisis and wars because um, I really never fully understood uh, the background, the history of its existence. You can understand Bible and still not understand what's occurring in the Middle East. We know about the land. And we all know. This is more important than shoes. Somebody wanted to just get in there. If you look at dates, you can see how wars start when people get in the middle of things that have been going on with no background knowledge. And we can even look at the war in the Middle East and see that happen. Organizations and terrorist groups and militants that did not exist from the very beginning, but then came into existence and had their own pre-existence, presuppositions towards certain things. That's the same way in America with situations. You have to let God take care and work it out on your behalf. And you'll soon learn those who will always be ones to keep up contention and strife and those who will always be the one who seek God 
for resolution. The biblical history of the land of Israel, Palestine, Egypt, and Jordan is a complex and multifaceted story that is deeply intertwined with religious and historical narratives. It's important to note that the following summaries based on accounts found in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, and should be understood as a religious perspective rather than a comprehensive historical account. Additionally, there are different interpretations and historical records outside the Bible that provides alternative viewpoints on these regions in history. For instance, the land of Israel is, a, is central to the Bible and it portrays a significant role in Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions. In the Bible, the land is often referred to as the promised land. And it is a place where God promised to give the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelites, a home. The most well-known story related to the land of Israel in the Bible is the Exodus from Egypt and the subsequent conquest of Canaan under the leadership of figures like Moses and Joshua. Many of us are aware of the land of Israel in the first five books of the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But when we think about the promised land that God allowed Moses to view it, but allowed Joshua to enter it, we can think of Israel, the land over there by the Mediterranean Sea. It originally had been set up as the Philistine. Gaza was the Philistine in the Old Testament city. They had five. Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Gazar, and another one. I can't quite remember it off here. But for those who know biblical history, you understand the importance of having land by the Mediterranean Sea for import and export. We can even see that now with Egypt, how the United States sent humanitarian aid that was able to come in to Egypt because Egypt is right there by the Mediterranean Sea, but it couldn't get into Gaza where they're at. And that is because of their location. So we understand the importance of certain land, even during times of war and during times of non-war. We know that to be true if we look at Ephesus, where they had a lot of import and export. We've always depended on other nations and other countries for certain items that we trade with. That's how we got the color purple. It can't, and that's how we got the alphabet from the Phoenicians. We've always shared different cultures with other society and cultures that has enhanced our culture to learn from them. Now, if we really think about this, who created all these cultures? God. We're all different. We live in different climates. We eat different food. We wear different clothes. Our styles are different. Some cover their hair. Some don't. That is the beauty of the creation of God. When we are able to all peacefully live together. Despite of our differences, if we can respect one another from a humanitarian perspective. It can be a beautiful nation and kingdom and society. It's when we're unable to handle our differences in a way that we have to do harm to one another. We can look at Israel and Hamas, but if the truth be told, we can see similar controversies right here in America. 
That's how Black Lives Matter started. They were each killing one another. Now, what was the difference among them? See, racism is not always about the color of your skin. It's a lot deeper than that. It's about differences. It's about values. Sometimes wealth. Respect. Understanding. And most importantly, fear of God. Lawlessness is when you don't fear. And many who don't fear God won't fear the law. We know that to be true. Because many of the Israelites didn't always obey God. They had their fights between the priests, the Korites, and the Aaronites, who would behold the priesthood for the temple of God. We've always had differences, but it's how we deal with those differences that determines a survival. And with each war, it becomes more devastating than the other. What is more devastating about the potential of a World War III? I don't remember one or two. So I can't even imagine what a three would be. Because I didn't fight it. And I really don't remember it from history. It didn't impact me in a way that it would etch a memory on my mind or on my heart. And sometimes we take for granted the freedom that we have that others fought for us. Because you didn't lose a loved one in the war. You didn't have a loved one to go fight a war. You didn't see the impact and the results of war. The tragics that they go through. And so we take for granted what we had, not realizing those who had to fight to maintain the freedom that we had. And that's why we have holidays like Veterans Day. There are many shot, but they're not thinking about the soldiers that was killed. Martin Luther King's birthday. But many shot, but they're not thinking about the lives that was killed to give freedom to go to school, to read, to write, to attend churches, to sit in the same public place to eat, to sit on the bus wherever you want to ride the bus, to be able to purchase in certain areas. See, we can look now. But we don't see what it took to get there. We didn't walk across the Salmon Bridge and hold hands together and pray and sing together. The generation that's killing each other now wasn't a part of that. They don't know what it used to be when many were united, but now they're killing each other. See, there is no Black Lives Matter. Every life matters. And so when you look at all the discrepancies that many lost their life trying to make a difference, just how far have we come? That always puzzled me because I was nine when Martin Luther King was killed. And where I lived at, most of the places was destroyed. 
And they really didn't start rebuilding the area until I was later in my 30s. Mm -hmm. So when I see these nations being destroyed by missiles in war, Uranian, Israel, Gaza, Hamas, all of the places. We don't think how long it takes to rebuild back those places. Nor do we think about the civilians. See, I can't tell you about a war. I'm a civilian. The war people can tell you about the war. And the close family members of the war people can tell you about the war. I can only go by what I see and read, but I don't know war. And each war appears to be more devastating because these are civilians. And while I can sit in my home, I can't imagine somebody coming through the door and destroying me just because of who I am. I'm different from those who want to destroy me. It's really not about me, but I am a civilian, a casualty of war. When you really think about it, it's like Satan. It's really not about Christians. We'll just become a casualty of Christianity. Because Satan's problem is really with God. And when you think about wars, many civilians are caught in the middle because the problems are really between leadership. And so as we meditate on that, we can even find that here in America. We're thinking about a uh, religion war. Well, we can look at wars within churches. Just people in churches don't get along. And they have a problem with leadership. And a church will be divided. And those bad Feelings will carry over to another denomination or carry over to another church establishment. So we can look at everybody and criticize all this that's going on. But the reality is, until we learn how to deal with differences, how we handle our disagreements often reflects a lot of the state condition. Middle East is impacting the United States. We had someone killed here because of their religious affiliation. We've had protests here and marches. We've had all kinds of things that happen. And who's right or wrong? This is history. It goes way back. And we have laws, war laws, but many don't honor war laws when they're in a war. The same many don't honor the laws of the United States just every day. There was somebody that just came to their house and killed. So we see what God meant when he said the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know the heart? No one but God. We see what God means when he says, know us by the spirit. And many of you know that. Because you wear uniforms when you go to war. Anybody can put your uniform on. That doesn't mean they want you.
And that's why Egypt is a little concerned with opening up the borders and many coming in. If they give the humanitarian aid, because everybody coming won't be coming for peace. Some could come and pretend to be what they're not. We know that to happen in the Bible, where some snuck in and pretended to be something and then did something ungodly. History gives us a lot of information about people's heart when they're in disagreement. And not everybody is confrontational. And God understands and knows that. But God has always had a time when there was a time for war and a time for peace. And so we have to seek God for everything. That's why God allows certain people to be in certain positions who are able to operate during certain periods of time. And sometimes we don't appreciate the freedom we have until the freedom is taken. I can't imagine how those people feel. I don't know them. I don't, I don't know the difference between them. And I'm using this opportunity to try to familiarize myself and educate myself about the difference. Because I see them the same way I see denominations here. Not all denominations are the same. We holler, we're a denomination. But you don't live like the ways of God. You don't fear God. You don't honor God. But you, you, you're hollering about being a denomination. And so you see some that are saying, we're not like that. We may be Jews, but we're not all like that. And I can understand what they mean. We may be Palestinians, but we're not all like that. I can understand. Because some of you can say that to yourself today. I may be African-American, but we're not all like that. We're not killing one another. We're not stealing from one another. We're not trying to destroy one another. And some of you might say, I'm a denomination. We're not destroying one another. That's right. I'm, 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 I'm Caucasian. We're not killing one another. So now you see the differences where many can project who they are but not have the spirit of who they are. That's how you have some to say they're Christians, but they don't act like Christians. So you don't represent me. You're not acting like my father. And I can't align myself with you just because you say you're a Christian. Because God says, I have to align myself with your action. You act like non-Christian to do the things that dishonor God. I can't align myself with you. The same way denominations have been set up. You can see this war in a foreign land where you can think about the problems with denominations. And they're all supposed to serve the same God and the same Lord. But have differences. And that is just what God is showing the whole world of the differences we have and how we interact with these differences. It's not as easy as we think it is. And we can see why. It's not as easy. Some are giving up their positions because they don't feel that the stand some people are taking is appropriate. I don't know if it is or not. I don't know enough about it. So I really can't say too much about it other than 
Look at the actions. When has it ever been acceptable to come in people's homes and massacre people? When has that been acceptable? And if people will do that, there's no boundaries. And so some are saying there's no safe place. No, in reality, there will come a time when it won't be any safe place. The Bible talks about that. There'll be nowhere you can go or hide from anything when lawlessness comes. So there is a time when God will release righteousness to hold back lawlessness because he knows the heart can be deceitfully wicked. And many have experienced that throughout the whole world. Many have lost kids being shot down. Many have lost parents being shot down. And I'm not talking about Israel and Hamas. I'm speaking right here in the United States. We've seen a lot of that happen. <laughs> and that had nothing to do with Israel or Hamas. Had nothing to do with political leaders had nothing to do with any excuse we can make it about. It was those who conducted themselves in ways that was wicked. Go to the cemetery and you'll see a lot of that. That's how Black Lives Matter came about. That has nothing to do with cops against criminals. We can label, divide, and propagate whatever we want, but that will never dissolve the problem of the reality of what is happening. How we deal with our differences. You can even see that among family members. is how you deal with your differences. And the Bible says it will come to that. And we have to hold true to the God we say we serve. No matter what. We can't allow our own prejudices to enter. We can't allow our own will, our feelings, it has to be a commitment to the God we say we serve. Either we fear our God, love our God, and going to obey our God. Or we not. Because he's the only one that knows the seen and the unseen and how to resolve it all. And this war, everyone, should be more concerned because we're dealing with nuclear weapons now. And if many are not honoring agreements already put in place, they will not honor the nuclear weapon agreement. And we know the devastation of nuclear weapons. And we know all that has them. And we could cease to exist. Unresolved situation.
And it's unfortunate because a lot of times others are drawn into a situation. It's almost like a marriage. Everybody comes together to enjoy the union. Everybody's happy. The marriage is going well. Then the marriage begins to sever us and you have sides. One's for the bride, one's for the groom. And there's tension and you can't get along. But you used to could get along. But something happened and now there's tension. And you have to take sides. You're almost forced to take sides. And tension continues to grow. And there's a pulling away. There's a difference. And it continues to boom. And that's what these other foreign countries are dealing with. If I let you on my lane, now I have those that have problems with you. They have problems with me. It's almost like you have a home. And someone comes into your home that has done a criminal activity and law enforcement is after them because they're in your home. You are now a target of law enforcement and you may not have even known what they've done. You may not have even known what's going on, but you are now a target because they're in your home and you're harboring them in your home. So law enforcement has the choice to make. How bad was the action that you did? Was it enough to destroy your home and kill everybody in the house to get to you? Or was it to the point where I'll just come in and just try to take you and not destroy the others? That's why you have a lot of civilians that are being destroyed. They can't get out. And they call them casualties of war. But this is really not a war because a war is normally between soldiers that are both armed that have made the commitment to fight. But these are civilians that don't even know what's going on. They have no weapons to fight. They have no ability to fight you. And it's horrendous. No water, no light, no food. Hospitals being blown up. And yes, terrorists will use civilians to hide among them. Just like they do here in the United States. The world is, is wicked. Many will use kids as a way to make you feel sorry for them. We know that to have happened a lot. All types of people run scams with kids. Because they know the average person will feel sorry for a child. And terrorists knows that. That's why some will hurt kids. To provoke you to build anger and some do it for fear. We know that here in America, somebody will break into your home, kill everybody in the house, even the kids. We're not seeing anything different over in Israel and Gaza that has not happened in America, but it wasn't war. It wasn't based on the same situation, but it happened. And a lot of that's black on black. And God is trying to get us to see the differences that some will use as an excuse when it's a heart problem, not a color of your skin problem. It's a moral problem, your value. The hatred that some breathe. And it's not all. 
is not all. Every angel did not leave God. Some did. The wicked ones left God. Not everybody left. But God knew they would leave. He cast them out. But not everybody went. And not everybody's going to be wicked. But some are. That's why he says, who knows the heart? But the heart is deceitfully wicked. Don't you ever think you know more than God. God never says anything that he doesn't know. That's why he tells you, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. The Lord says, thoughts of peace and not of evil. And to give you an expected end. Jeremiah 29, 11. Then Proverbs 19, 21 reminds us, there are many devices that humanity has. Don't ever forget that. We all have plans. And some plans are personal agendas. And personal agendas will pull other people into their personal agendas. We know that to be true here in America. You can see it in marriages. You can see it in churches. You can see it in companies. So you're not just seeing this over an international. See, we can look at them and we can look at their war and we can criticize what they're doing. But if the truth be told, we've been going through this for many years here in America among our own. We can't blame other people for our problems, import or export. Immigrants or not immigrants. This existed before they came. See, we can always point fingers and blame everybody. And God is saying, until you accept responsibility for self with God, then only then can God give you a clear understanding of what is happening. We are held accountable for the choices we make. We are held accountable for the stand we take when situations happen. And now we're here. It just won't go away. You had the pandemic. had more death than you ever imagined. Many couldn't bury their loved ones. Infected the whole world. Can you see what has happened? You can't blame a state. You can't blame a nation. You can't blame a kingdom. It affected the whole world because God is looking at the whole world, his creation. It's not a people person. It's a heart person of all creation. It's not a law problem. Laws will never change the conscience of humanity. That's why the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? Jeremiah 17, 9. He's allowing you to know. You will never know. Only God. He said it can be desperately wicked. God never says anything. He doesn't know. God never says anything. Just to say it. God doesn't waste his words. Every word means specifically something. We may miss it. We may miss it. But it doesn't mean he didn't send it. And we can look 
at the whole world and see this has been culminating. This didn't happen overnight. Don't blame your political system. They're not your God. They're human. Don't blame your economic system. You have a God that's above all. And that's who we're supposed to be seeking for everything in our life. This didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight. And look at all that's going on. And now we're faced with this, the Middle East crisis. Even before the pandemic, we had all this killing in America. What was the excuse then? See, it's easy for people to point fingers and blame everybody, but take responsibility for what they don't do or what they did. Non-action can be just as worse as the wrong action. That's why God said you'll be held accountable for all that was said or done, seen or unseen. Consider the matter, fear God and keep my commandment. His commandment are actions. Thou shall have no other gods before me. Thou shall not make any grieving image. Thou shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness. If you love me, keep my commandments. And love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. If you're loving me with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, then how can your heart be deceitfully, desperately wicked? Because God is not deceitfully, desperately wicked. That's why you know the person by the spirit. And some of you still won't take heed to God. What's in the heart comes out, not just in words, but in actions. Why well, the Bible says deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? He's trying to tell you, how you gonna know it? You gonna look at the clothing? How you gonna know it? And we know that to be true. And so we can sit back and blame every kingdom. We can blame every administration. We can blame every institution, every organization. We can blame every denomination. But just like in the Garden of Eden, when everybody was finger pointing, God found fault for disobedience, not obeying him. And he executed judgment based on his knowledge and his wisdom. How you deal with differences without honoring God first and seeking his will and following his commandments to love him, honor him with all your mind, heart, body, and soul will determine how you handle 
all the differences you're going to have throughout your entire life. This won't be the last war. The Bible say it shall happen until this world no longer exists. God said it, he knows it. And so we cannot take certain groups and say everybody's that way. And then try to destroy people. You think everybody's like that. That's why God says, I know the thoughts I have towards you. God knows everybody. He said, I don't have thoughts of evil. Thoughts of good and expected in. Let's look, move on to the Palestine. Like I said, I don't know everything about all the groups and all the Muslims and the Arabs and the Palestinians and, and, and all these different Islamic and Israelites. But you only know by action what is done. The same way with African Americans. You only know by actions what's done. Same way with Caucasians. You only know by actions what's done. We all don't have the same heart. Some are deceitfully wicked, as the Lord said. He didn't say a cult. He said, the heart is deceitfully above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He didn't say a tongue. He said the heart. The heart is an organ. An organ is inside the vessel, the earthly vessel. All vessels eat. Earthly vessels. All earthly vessels bleed. All earthly vessels have organs. They have hearts. They have a mind. They have a soul. All earthly vessels put on clothes. It's not the same clothes, but they put on clothes. So he didn't say those things you see externally. He said, an organ you can't see is inside the vessels, but you can see the manifestation of it through the actions and the words spoken. That's why he said, who can know? He didn't say a race. He didn't say a gender. He said the heart. All race and gender has a heart. The wisdom of God. He said, who can know it? And Jesus spoke of it again when he came and met evil heart. And so we just can't point fingers. Because if the truth be told, some of your churches are just as bad as the Middle East.
And this is a world problem. Like COVID, world problem. Where could you go? Nowhere. But to God. To his throne. Who could you depend on? No one. But God, his throne. Your money couldn't stop COVID. And some people over in these Middle East have money, but they can't buy. Have money, but you can't purchase nothing because there's nothing to purchase. Didn't the Bible say there will come a time when you will have but won't be able to purchase? And some of you will get the mark to survive of the beast, to be desperately wicked, Nothing God said is just being seen. His word is power and knowledge and understanding with wisdom. And so we have to pray for what's going on in the world. Palestine is a term often used to refer to the same geographical region as the land of Israel in modern context. The Bible contains numerous references to Palestine, particularly in the context of historical account, prophetic messages, and the life of Jesus in the New Testament. See, Jesus came and walked Palestine. This is all tied to biblical land with whatever group you want to make it about. And so we don't look at all the various differences, but we know Jesus walked in Palestine. The region was the home of various ancient peoples and empires and its history is intertwined in the biblical narrative. Now, Egypt also has a crucial role in the Bible, especially Old Testament. The story of the Israelites' enslavement in Egypt and their subsequent liberation is one of the most significant narratives in the Bible. The figure of Moses leads the Israelites out of Egypt, which is known as the Exodus. Egypt is often referenced as a symbol of oppression, but it also is looked at as a role as a place of refuge and interaction with biblical figures. Now let's look at Jordan. The biblical history of Jordan is closely tied to its geography as it is located to the east of the Jordan River. The Bible says in the Old Testament, the Israelites under the leadership of Joshua crossed the Jordan River to enter the land of the promised land. We see here how they crossed the Jordan River to enter the land of the promised land. You see the significance of all these biblical land over in Middle East. The cities of Jericho and Ai and Jordan were famously conquered by the Israelites during their early conquest of Canaan. Additionally, Jordan features in the narrative of various biblical figures and events. Now, when we use the Israelites here, we also know that many who are saying they're Israelites or in Israel, they're not the original Israelites. We know all of them are not living like Israelites. They're not honoring the same God. They're not all honoring the same commandments or fear of God. It's just like here. You have all these denominations. You know, you have a holy denomination. And if the truth be told, you know, that's just a title. Half of them don't have nothing holy about them. You know, and, and, and that's just being realistic and honest about titles that we have. And then we want to hold on to those titles and make those titles represent who we are when our heart is not holiness. We don't fear God. We're not obeying God. We're not honoring God. But we want to hold on to a denomination and hide behind a denomination, making that to be who we are. And that's the problem that Jesus had with some of the religious leaders. 
your Pharisees and your Sadducees and your scribes. You want to look the part, but you don't have my heart. You want to serve in my temple, but you don't love me. You don't even know who I am. I'm the son of God standing before you, and you don't even know who I am because your heart is deceitfully wicked. And you don't know me. And we're going to all be held accountable. We're going to all be held accountable. The important about all these regions, and I don't know everyone, and how they're tying into everything now, but we know by the Mediterranean Sea, for those who have ever had any biblical history, we know the significance. It used to be the Philistine. Philistines area, which you had those giants that many were afraid of when they went into the land of Canaan. They had those grapes that were so big because they had a lot of the giants that lived in the area. So you had regions. And, and we could see the presence in the Bible about their his, histories. They're complex and they extend it far beyond the biblical account. Now, Israel isn't set up like that. They don't have them, but they do have Eschon because I heard them mention that the other day when they were talking. So some of the lands during biblical times still exist. But some of the principles and values and morals of people importing and import and, import and export and how things are changed, they don't all have the same values and morals almost like some of the churches some of the some of the churches are not the same way churches used to be and we all can testify today before we had a group that wanted to change churches make it more modernized or make it better because they didn't feel like what God had already established and done was sufficient enough for itself. We started changing a lot of things in church. And when we changed a lot of things in church, we changed the standards, we changed the moral, we changed the holiness, we changed the way we reverence God. And so you had many that didn't have the same dedication to God, that didn't have the same fear of God. And so they didn't operate accordingly, not just in the church, but even in your own home, even in your workplace. We just changed who we were. But we all hold the title, but we're not the same. And so when your denominations didn't get along, they came out with another denomination. I guess that's to make themselves set aside from the none. I'm not none of them. But there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God above all and in all. And so we have to be careful how we define ourselves by humanity's creation. If it's not God's definition, it will never stay. Because God's value and moral never changes. No matter what. And we can see over the years how much has changed. From the way we engage with one another. When you don't fear God, first and foremost, it's going to change your whole perspective and how you live your life. 
It's going to determine how you pray, how you seek God, how you stay removed from some situations, who you worry about. See, some of you worried about who somebody going to see. That's because they don't fear God. Their mind is not even on God. Because God sees it all. And you worried about something that's insignificant when it comes to God's kingdom and his righteousness and his holiness and his reverence. And so you bridge that over into folly. And that is the problem with the whole world, with what is happening. We know that to be true. We saw it from the very beginning with Adam and Eve when they pointed fingers at one another. Because they disobeyed God. Satan didn't make them disobey. They chose. He didn't force them. They chose to believe and disobey God. They chose to not trust God. And when we don't trust God, when we don't believe God for who he is, when we don't think he's a believer, as us being a believer, that, that he's faithful and true, and we don't come to him believing that he is who he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, then we get in our own personal gym. And all of these nations have rulership. All of these nations have people in positions that God allowed them to be in those positions. Don't blame them. Take heed of what you're doing. Take heed. Consider the matter. Are you praying? Are you seeking his faith? Are you being obedient to God's will? Are you polluting his holy name? Are you accepting his wisdom and his sanctification so that you can live for him in the way that he has commanded you to live for? See, I don't know much about the modern political and social dynamic in the Middle East and how they're being influenced by many facts including religious and historical significance in all these areas. But make no mistake, God does. And all of this is tying in to religious and historical significance of these areas. So that means it's the same God that existed then, that exists today. That I do know. How we change God, how we view God is not going to change who God is. We can set up our own differences. It's the same God. The same way it's the same God over all these denominations. All denominations are supposed to be holy before God. All are supposed to fear God. All are supposed to reverence him and obey him. God is not changing who he is. God is not changing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I'm not getting into all of this. Who's Christianity? Who's not Christianity? Who's the Muslim? Who's the Islamic? Who's the Arabs and all of that?
those who believe that he wasn't crucified, those that believe he wasn't the son of God, those who believe in the Old Testament and those who don't believe in the New Testament. See, those are religious differences. And God knows it. And God says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God is saying that. Look at what's going on in the world. And if y'all don't put your eyes back on God, there will be no world. None of your opinions will matter. Nothing you got will exist. It won't exist, the world. We don't know when God is coming back. But you better consider the matter. You better fear him and obey him and know that he's going to judge everything, whether it be good or evil, whether they see it or don't see it. Some of you are worrying about too many other people. You better worry about what God is seeing. You better worry about what God knows. He's the one that ultimately handles all the judgment. Can't be pointing fingers. Nothing gets resolved. They pointed finger in the garden of Eden and nothing was resolved. God kicked them all out. Because they were wrong. Because he told them not to. And they did what he told them not to. No matter what Satan said, he told them not to. There's never an excuse when God says don't. There's never an excuse when God says you better fear me. You better obey me. There's no excuse. There's no excuse when God tells you the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things and desperately wicked. You better, you better know no one can know it. You better depend upon God. And so God is showing us. You had all this problem before the pandemic. Now what's your excuse? You're going to have famine and pestilence. Now what's the excuse? And we can all complain. Look at what's happening here in America. We don't have it. And you're taking everything and sending it to the foreign countries. Well, that didn't happen overnight. And we can spend all our time going back and forth, arguing and complaining and finger pointing. But the bottom line, if you don't go to the one who can resolve it, you won't need no protection. We won't exist. You won't have no home. We won't exist. Only God can handle what's going on. There won't be anything to get. We won't exist. Because you're not serious focusing on the God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think of according to the power that's working within us. The churches are already falling apart. That's been happening for years. No holiness, no fear of God, no reverence for God. Too much self-promotion, but no God exhortation.
doing a fashion show. And a concert. But no holy ministry until a holy and righteous God. We want to make him about things of this world, but are not about the character that he places within us. That he says, no, no one by the flesh, but by the spirit. So we want to exalt things, but not God. American flag is not going to do it. He's the God of the entire world. He's not a God over one people. He's a God over the entire world, whether you accept him or not. He said, have you not known? I'm the Lord God. Is anything too hard for me? He's not a God over one specific denomination. You don't have him. He's omnipresent. He belongs to all that will call upon him. And that's what God is sending a message to his people. God is awesome in all his ways. And he's merciful. He has great love and kindness. And the truth be told, this world should not even be in existence. And if we think about all that we have done to progress, we have enough right now to destroy the whole world through our differences. We don't even need a nuclear world. We're doing it ourselves without the nuclear. But the nuclear world will. And it's not nothing God doesn't know. Everybody's not wicked. Everybody's not evil. And God loves his creation. He wants to give his creation the very best. But you got to understand, he created the differences. And there's beauty and differences. When we honor him. That's why he created it. God knows what he's doing. Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. God is reminding you, you better know who I am. Is there anything too hard for me? Some of y'all are trying, some of y'all been too busy trying to know who flesh is. You better know who God is. You worried about flesh, you better worry about God. Because there's no flesh that's going to be able to do anything for you when it comes to God. Is there anything too hard for you? And so we think about all these biblical places. And like I said, I don't understand all the dynamics between Middle East and how it's influenced with the religious and historical significance. 
because I don't know international politics or Middle East or anything to study that, but I don't know it all. I've always wanted to go to Israel. A place I always wanted to go to Jerusalem. I always wanted to see Egypt. I always wanted to see the Jordan Valley, the Jordan River. I wanted to see the Sea of Galilee. I wanted to see the Mediterranean Sea. I always wanted to visit because I love the diversification that God has created in a while. And I don't know if God will ever allow me to be able to go. I wanted to see Jericho and I, where it was supposed to be at, the area. I always wanted to see the Jordan River. Wanted to see what the land of Canaan would have looked like before they took over and built up. I wanted to see Jerusalem Wall. I like their culture. I like to learn from their culture. And we have many here in America. Well, we shouldn't be complaining. You didn't complain. We had Chinatown. When we had Chinatown in D.C. and everybody used to go there to get their tea, to try out their stuff, the culture they brought over. Because the world was created for my diversification. To serve God. Not human. It was never designed to be ran by human. We were never created to seek human. We were created for God. We were designed for God. Not human. That's why God said the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's why God said the world was created for God. Not him. And he's allowed people to be in these positions. And not everybody's evil and wicked. If I'm in my home and somebody tries to come into my home, home to hurt me. And I respond a certain way. It's not because I'm evil and wicked. You're trying to destroy me. And I'm trying to protect myself. And you're provoking me to respond that way. I'm in my home, minding my business. And see, people don't look at all the whole matter. They don't consider the whole matter. And while we're fighting and fingerprint pointing internally, because that's what the devil does, he comes to divide He comes to destroy. He comes to weaken, to make you doubt God, to make you disobey God. But God says, you better consider this man. Because you don't need a man to get to me. You have direct access to me, wherever you at. And who you put your faith and trust in, that's a choice you make. Now I'm not getting into all these differences of ideology and, you know, because I'm speaking to you as a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. 
the son of God. Who was crucified and born and raised again. Born immaculate, raised from the dead. I believe he's coming again. But we all know not all Christians act like Christians. Some of them act worse than the heathen. And they say they're Christian. So we can understand how some people are saying, we're not like that. Because we are living in times where people will put on any title to say they are something that they're not in action and in heart. That's why Jesus said it to them. You're saying you want, but you're mine. I know your heart. It's, de it's deceitful. And it's desperately wicked. You're not one of me. But you're saying you are. You're gathering with me. You're supping with me, but you're not me. You're not one of me. He called them sheep. He called them goats in sheep's clothing. He called them goats in sheep clothing. And some of you are the same way. You get into everything. But you ain't obeying God about nothing. And God says that's deceitfulness, dishonesty, disloyalty to God. This is not about loyalty to a human. This is not about loyalty to a flag. This is about a God. And if you don't get it right with a God, there will be no flag. There'll be no world. Because he said he's coming back to destroy it. He didn't tell you when. Oh, I'm sorry. You going on somebody else's agenda when they told you they're going to go. You going on somebody else's time. You trying to get on somebody else's time that don't even know the time that don't even honor God with their time. If the truth be told. Let's bring this to closure. So here we see how God has allowed all of this to happen to get our attention. Because God don't allow anything. If he said, is anything too hard for me? He's letting you know right up front in Jeremiah, if I'm the God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for me, don't you think I can stop anything? And we treat God like he's limited. We treat him like we can tell him what to do. We Some of us treat God like we own God. Some of y'all act like you got God in your church and nobody else can have him. He's just there with you. And God told you he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. So if you think Going to a church going to give you something. What did that have to do with the relationship with them? Because many came to them but didn't have the relationship. Many were in the temple and didn't know. <laughs> See, that's how good God is. 
Many were in the temple and didn't know. Let's bring this to closure. God is allowing all of this to happen. Don't believe for one minute God is not allowing. Oh, he is. There is nothing that can ever happen that God doesn't know is going to happen and that he can't stop. Why he doesn't, we don't know. Nobody can tell you everything about God. If they could, only if God could tell them. That's why God said, you better be careful. Many will come and tell you all kinds of things. The Antichrist will tell you everything. But it won't be true. God is not allowing this Middle East to happen just to happen. He didn't allow the pandemic to happen just to happen. And it's going to be much even after that. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Because you have some sincere Christians that are praying. And they are seeking God. And they know God has the power and there's nothing that he cannot do. So we understand that. And, we, and, 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 and when you're a Christian, you don't have racism in your heart. When you're a Christian, you don't have prejudice in your heart. When you're a Christian, you don't have deceitfulness and desperately wickedness in your heart. Not if you're a Christian. Not if you have the relationship, you have a spirit. I'm not talking about a title that anybody can profess and say they are. Some of y'all better stop putting your faith and trust in the material things and put your faith and trust in a spirit that only can come from God. So God is going to work it out. I'm not even concerned about that. And I just played that worship song because it came up. And they were worshiping and praying for Israel. It was something different. I don't understand their language. I don't even know what they were saying when they spoke their language. I don't know whether they were Arabs or Muslim or Israel. I assume they were Israelites or Jews. I think Israel's Jews. Yeah, I think they're Jews. It was just a song I just played. It has nothing to do with anything. It was just a song I used to sing and I used to know. And it came on. And I decided to play it. And it was encouraging to see the people worshiping God. Because no matter what we go through, we can't stop worshiping God. But there's a time for worship and there's a time for battle. And God determines what you don't, God does. And I know we have people that try to determine because we have people that always want to determine God's ways. We just have been like that. He tried to tell you in Isaiah, your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. And sometimes we just need to take God at his word. And let it be. Because God don't say anything. Just to be saying it. He's saying it. For a reason. He's trying to let you know. Don't you ever get to the point. Where you think you're going to control me. So in Isaiah 55. 8 he says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Said it the Lord. But it didn't stop there. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So you're not controlling God with your rain. You're not controlling God with your sun. You're not controlling God with your weather. Because God is over all creation. So it goes on to say, 
For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it, it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. And so what God is telling you, you don't know my ways. They are higher than humanity ways. You don't know my thoughts. They are higher than any thought you can ever think of. You're him at. And some of you are putting too much faith and trust in humanity that God is higher. So he tells you to pray for those who are in position, but you got to pray to God first. So whatever God does, it's going to be all right because God knows everything he's doing. He created this world and when he want to end it, he'll end it. However he wants it ended. But I don't feel it's coming to an end. I believe that God is sending warnings and signs that many have been praying for to turn the heart of all creation back to a holy and righteous God. To get rid of some differences of personal agendas back to God's agenda. His counsel shall stand forever. Because we've seen this happening for long times, even within the churches. The churches are no different than the Middle East. They have their kingdoms. Like the Middle East have their kingdom. They have their altercation and difference. They may not be using guns, but they're using other methods and other ways of trying to control, oppress, set up their ways, do their programs and agendas. So when God looks, he sees it all and he operates accordingly. I always wanted to go to Israel. I guess this is the time in which God would show me more about Israel because of this. So I'm not going to spend time on the differences. And they are differences. But what we have to know is that God's ways are higher than all ways. And his thoughts are higher than all thoughts. And so when you're focused on God, you're not focused on all these other agendas that are irrelevant when it comes to God's overall counsel for his creation. Even Jesus tried to show us that when he came and walked among the land. Some things you don't need to be concerned about. Because now you know what humanity will do. But if you're faith and trust in God, you'll understand where your peace and joy comes from. So here we have it, the land of Israel, Palestine, Egypt, and Jordan. And I'm sure there's many other areas over in the Middle East. And this was just coming from a research that was done, not really much. I pulled this up from AI, artificial intelligence, to see what they were saying about Palestine, Israel, and Egypt, and Jordan. I didn't ask about the different religion in those areas and to explain 
all the different religions. But we do know it goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If I'm not mistaken, I think they recently passed an Abrahamic code or something. Yeah, something that they had passed uh, because they understood the um, significance for Jews, Christian, and Islamic traditions in Israel. It has a very deep religious background. a very deep religious background. Uh, so you see why you have, uh, that going on in that area. So we have to keep everything prayed up, uh, because if we can't learn how to deal with differences, the way God will want us to deal with differences, then the differences will not be beneficial in the way that God created humanity to have the differences up under his auspices, but there'll be differences that would destroy humanity. We'll end up destroying our very existence upon the world. You know, I understand what they were saying when they were talking about a genocide of their people. Well, before this happened to this, we were having a lot of um, people in, in the United States being killed from drugs. There was an influx of drugs and it was a high death rate of drugs. We're still having that with fentanyl. Then we have a high death rate of um, gun violence. We, we could just go on and on and on and look at all the differences that um, every day people die. It's just it's just interesting. Even China isn't the same. We're we're, we're growing away from our traditions. We're, we're um, how do I want to think about it? Um, when I think about, it's like the sons and daughters that were raised in a tradition to know their God, is leaving the tradition of who their God is. They've made and created God to be in another image. It's like we're trying to take God and move him with every generation to be acceptable to all the changes in the world. So we become very um, less sensitive desensitized to the things that's going on. We're not sensitive of the movement of God. We're not sensitive of the heart of God. Things that should make us cry and lay at the feet of the Lord, it doesn't move a lot of us no more. Things that we would one time be fearful to do, there's no fear. There used to be places and things that were so highly respected. I don't care how bad you thought you were, you weren't going to do it. And you certainly weren't going to desecrate certain places because of the fear of God. But now, that fear doesn't exist. And because it doesn't exist, this is a lot of what you see. And that's unfortunate, but that's what you see. Oh, yeah, you see a lot of that. You see a lot of that. You see a lot of people that don't have fear of God. There's no reverence, respect, and fear for God. And we, we, we brought God down to worldly elements. We would never associate God with certain things that was not holy. 
that had no honor and reverence for God. But now we'll do it in any type of way. They have people twerking in the church. There's no holy man, it's a twerk. We'll be entertained. There's no ministry, there's entertainment. And we can't blame, it's, it's just a, a pulling away from God. He said it would happen. But he said there'll be a few, a remnant. He said there will always be a remnant. And I'm going to close on this. I'm going to close on this. He said there will be a remnant. There will be a remnant. And he said, the remnant will hold true to God. We have a remnant that's holding true to God. And the meaning, we're not going to give up on God. We're not going to get in the folly and foolishness of God. We're going to pray. We're going to fast. We're going to worship. We're going to remain committed to him. However he sees fit. Because we know God is faithful. I don't care how you change. I don't care how many changes you make. God is not changing. You can't bring God down. You can't put him up. Only in your mind. But who God is, he doesn't change based on who you think he is. And it's unfortunate some people think they can pull God down and they can put him up. And that's a false assumption of the power of God. His church is not controlled by humanity. His church is controlled by his spirit. And the spirit is given to him. He gives it to humanity. And humanity obeys him. And has the fear of him. You have the spirit of God and you have the, you have the spirit of God and you have the fear of God in you. A reverence respect for God. So we can make all these changes we want, but that isn't changing God's way, nor his thought. Biblical history of the land in the Middle East. The Middle East biblical history. I may not have given a, 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 a due diligence of the information there because I really haven't been taking the time to thoroughly go through it. I just wanted to see what the artificial intelligence search would give me about it. And I don't think it did, Jess. I think it, it did give some information, but... I don't think it gave a clear explanation of all of it from where it was to what it is today. But it gives us some understanding of how we got from religious and historical significance, how the factors the, 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 the influence of various factors put us at odds at what we are now. So now we know what we're dealing with. It 
Anybody who think a people are going to make them rich. You're putting your faith and trust in the things of this world. And that's how we are where we're at now. With what's been happening in this whole world. Personal agendas. Personal agendas. That's how we are. Some people see wars as prophets. Those who have stocks and bonds and certain companies that make the weapons. Those who have investment in the food that they have to send over for the humanitarian aids and all kinds of things. But we're really going through a lot, the world, because we don't know if we're going to have a government shutdown and we have to make decisions on how we're going to assist those in the Middle East. I didn't realize that the Speaker of the House was so significant that if one was not in place, what was being proposed by the president wouldn't make a difference because you don't have the Speaker of the House to release through the voting to release those funds. I'm learning more about how every area operates because I never had to work within government before. And I'm not working in government now, but it's affecting the whole world so I'm looking at the things that are happening and how instrumental, because I, I see why God had government to be accepted. I, I, so I understand why government was even implemented, even during biblical times. There was political government when Jesus came. You had emperors, you had governors that was over certain jurisdictions. So you, you see how things were put in order from the very beginning and how we've grown and we've made it into different regions and different understanding of how we get to where we're at. But we have a great burden that we're dealing with, that only God can really resolve it. There's nothing too hard for God. But God is reminding us, if you don't put your focus back on him, all your personal agendas will be a waste. The world won't be here. There will be no world. And he's reminding us his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. They're higher. He's not a God of your wealth. He's the God of creation. And God has been very patient with this world. Very patient. Very patient. Very patient. Biblical lands in Middle East. Isn't it interesting? Some of those lands even exist today. And they were there when Jesus came. He walked in Palestine. I can imagine how he feels about Palestine now. And I'm not comparing Martin Luther King with, with Jesus by no means. Martin Luther King was a man. Jesus, son of God. There is no comparison. But can you imagine how Martin Luther King would, would feel today with what is happening? Can you imagine how Jesus feels? All 
all that Jesus came and did. Can you imagine? What, how he feels with what's going on. I'm trying to get you to see the heart of the Lord. You can all relate to humanity's heart. Because you're always edifying a man over God. So that shows what's in your heart. But imagine how Jesus feels. with all of this going on, and he walked this land. He's walked where they're fighting it and destroying one another. But those places exist. They exist. And we're putting all our force, hope, and trust in the things of this world that could be gone tomorrow. I just don't understand it. I don't understand why some people who say they're Christians, why they don't get it. Why they can't comprehend it. Why they'll put their faith and trust in everything and everyone but the Lord. When this world could be gone tomorrow. I just don't understand it. It, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. God clearly tells you in his word. But you disobey God. And speak humanity's wisdom, but not God's wisdom. I'm a spirit. You put your faith and trust in my spirit. I'm omnipresent. I'm not at one location. I'm throughout this whole world. I see everything. I hear everything. And some of you more worried about what people hear. But you ain't worried about what God hears enough. And, sees. and he's the one that got to judge. Then you'll take the worldly ways and put God in it. You'll bridge them in it. I just don't understand it. It's like you don't have any fear of God. The reverence, holiness of God. Holiness you never compared with worldliness. That's the natural. Trying to compare to the spiritual. You'll never understand it. Because it's spiritually discerned. I don't know where y'all coming from. I don't know who y'all listening to. I don't know what man you made your God. But God says his thoughts is not like anybody else's thoughts, nor his mind. His ways are not like humanity's ways. And you better remember that. There's not a person that has been created that can be like God. His ways are not his ways, neither his thoughts, his thoughts. And I hold on to that. It has to come from God. There is nothing he can't do. Biblical lands in the Middle East. I'm amazed at how they're still there. I may never get to view it. I may never get to walk that land. I may never get... To visit that land. But it exists. Only God could preserve. Anything for that length of time. Only God. Only God. Only God. And we've become so desensitive. <laughs> so we want to make God a game. Hello. 
Rabata. I can't believe how anybody could do that. That has the spirit of God in them. Because see, the spirit of God is not going to let you do but certain things. It's going to convict you. That's why he said, no one can know the heart above all things. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God has warned you. He's warned you. No, God has warned you. God has warned you. God is a good God. Now, I'm not focusing on this Middle East for the war. I'm focused on for biblical land. I always wanted to go there. So since this came up, I just wanted to see why it keeps occurring. And God is saying, look at what's happening here. Look at what's going on here. Look at what my people are doing now. They think saying they go to a church is going to hide them when their heart is far from me. They think that's going to justify them through humanity when their heart is far from me. And he right. Look at what we put our faith and trust in. I've never heard anybody say, God has. That's why the world is in the condition it is. You want a humanity and that's what you chose. He's giving you humanity ways. His ways are not their ways and neither is his thought. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we love you, we honor you, we worship you. And we thank you for the peace and comfort that you give, even in the midst of uncertainty. You could have taken this world away in a blink of an eye. But you haven't. And all that you said shall come to pass, much of it has. You said there'll be rumors of wars and there'll be wars, there'll be pestilence, there'll be famine. And you've allowed a lot to come. And you're still allowing. You have Jews and Christians and Islamic in the Middle East, in the Promised Land, in Israel. And you know, many are named your name, but that's not who they are. The same way you have all these denominations that you never create. Denominations created by man. That we edify over you. And say we belong to a denomination, but not you. And so, Father, I pray that you would touch the heart of those that want to know truth, that you would give them your ways and give them your thoughts, and that you would protect them and cover them and lead them and guide them into your righteousness. And that you will handle the situation, for you know all things. There is nothing too hard for you. And while I don't understand all of this, I don't understand the Middle East crisis, I don't understand what's happening here in America. But you do. You know all things. And you've given us much to consider the matter of it all, to fear you, keep your commandment. And know that you'll judge all things, whether it be good or evil. 
seen or unseen. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for all that you're doing. May those who need be provided for through your hand. May those who call upon you know your comforting, loving, kind presence. And may you execute your righteousness upon all. Yes, God, upon all, may you execute your righteousness upon all, even right here in the United States. Because you're the only God of righteousness. And no one is righteous without you. You are righteousness. You are holiness. You are justice. And you are epitome of wisdom. There's none wiser than you. And so we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We worship you. And pray, God, that you will have your will on earth as it is in heaven. Because of who you are. The creator of all things. You're the ultimate authority and the source of it all. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.